Welcome back, everyone. In a recent video called An Idiot Westerner's Guide to Hamas, we discussed how some ideologies infecting Westerners prevent them from acknowledging who Hamas terrorists are and what their agenda is. The evening after that video was released, I was scanning various news sources to catch up on the ominous situation in the Middle East and saw an interview that's worth sharing. Many of you may be familiar with Massab Hassan Youssef, son of a Hamas founder. The link to the interview is in the description box. Here are a couple of highlights. You know, I was born at the heart of Hamas leadership, you know, and I know them very well. Uh, they don't care for the Palestinian people. They don't regard uh, the human life. And uh, I saw their brutality firsthand uh, back in 1996 when I spent about a year and a half in Megiddo prison. You know, they killed so many Palestinian people at that time. And this is when I decided that I, I cannot be together with this uh, movement. But Masab, you also say it's, it's almost impossible for us to give aid to the Gaza Strip, $100 million we're about to give them and keep it away from Hamas. Don't you, you agree that that can't work? Look, after we destroy the tunnels, we need to uh, uh, finish Hamas rule in Gaza Strip. This is priority number one. Then we need to replace the regime. Could be the Palestinian Authority, could be the Egyptian government, could be Arab League uh, force. Uh, we need to replace their uh, uh, rule in Gaza. After that, we can talk about aid. But as of now, sending any aid right. is a mistake. So you also believe that this isn't about the Palestinians fighting for their rights and their sovereignty. What is the real mission of Hamas? And what do they really think of the Palestinian people? You know, Hamas is not a national uh, movement. Hamas is a religious movement uh, with a goal to establish an Islamic state. They don't care for nationalism. Actually, they are against nationalism. With that said, uh, my understanding that they are using the Palestinian cause only to achieve their goals, so the long-term goal, you know, t transforming the Middle East and the world into an Islamic uh, state. This is Hamas' uh, agendas, and they are not heading, by the way. So uh, uh, Hamas is serving uh, foreign agendas, we're talking about Iran, and we're talking about Russia lately. Hamas serve uh, uh, those parties, and Iran pays them close to a billion dollars annually. Iran is the real master in this picture. Hamas does not serve the Palestinian people. Hamas serve right. Iran. Those are the masters of Hamas. So. Uh, their lie about nationalism, that they are a national movement and they care for the Palestinian people. Look at them. They are using Palestinian people as a human shield. We need to free Gaza from Hamas. This is what Israel is doing. It's doing the Palestinian people the greatest favor by uh, 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 bringing Hamas down. Let's review some of his claims. Hamas terrorists don't care about the Palestinian people or human life in general. Hamas terrorists have killed many Palestinians. Hamas terrorists preclude sending any aid. Hamas terrorists are using the Palestinians for their own cause. Hamas terrorists serve Iran. Hamas terrorists use Palestinians as human shields. And Israel is doing the Palestinians a favor by eliminating Hamas terrorists. You don't have to be a genius. Look at what these terrorists do. Look at what they say in their founding documents or in recent interviews that have been released. Look at the video footage Hamas recorded from October 7th or at the papers found on the bodies of the dead terrorists. All of it paints a coherent picture of who these people actually are. And much of what you just heard resonates with my previous video, but how could someone like me analyzing the situation from thousands of miles away produce a video that coheres so much with what the son of a Hamas founder says? Again, it's not rocket science. It only eludes people in the West who are bewitched by fashionable Western ideological trends. To examine this further, let's review some things you already heard and add some more to it. They don't care for the Palestinian people. They don't regard uh, the human life. This is what Israel is doing. It's doing the Palestinian people the greatest favor. Around the globe, and even in our capital, people are protesting for Hamas. Uh, they're saying for, for the Israel to back off and stop with the airstrikes. 
Well, what do you say to those protesters? What is about their mindset? Hamas doesn't care about the Palestinians. In fact, the Palestinians would be better without Hamas. And then questions about Western protesters. These things are deeply connected. Let's first address the glaring demographic contradictions of Western protesters, which have been observed many times in the comment section and everywhere else rational people exist. We would not have to say these things if there weren't so many Western idiots, but here it is. The Middle East is no friend to the LGBTQ crowd. As of 2021, the Williams Institute placed Palestine way down at number 130 for LGBTQ acceptance, much lower than the U.S. and many Western countries that clocked a mere 100 places or so higher. Western pro-LGBTQ protesters and the queers for Palestine crowds are indeed a glaring contradiction. But why isn't this clear to, for example, so many of our elite protesting students in Western prestigious schools, as well as many progressive activists, although I repeat myself? I've given you the answer already. Many people don't appear to notice the numerous ideological contradictions that exist within the groups signified by these LGBTQ etc. characters. But that doesn't matter. These people are still grouped together. We see other attempts to collect groups into larger coalitions as well, signified by the other acronyms and initialisms that you see listed. The history, experiences, and beliefs of these people may be significantly different and in some cases in strong disagreement. But it doesn't matter. The intent is to form a powerful coalition, and you do that by grouping people together regardless of their differences. But how can these people ally themselves with other people who would very likely execute them for their lifestyles? Well, to answer that, we need to look at one larger grouping. You see, these groups fit into a final group signified by any number of synonyms, such as the oppressed or the victims. And these are further lumped into the overarching concept of colonization. Of course, I would say that right as a conservative white Christian. Alternatively, I'm saying something so obvious that I can cite Armin Navabi writing for, that's right, QueerMajority.com. Many on the Western left, including the LGBT left, have become enamored with critical social justice, which provides a warped lens through which they perceive all of humanity as oppressors versus oppressed classes. Armed with this simplistic, binary worldview, leftists gravitate toward perceived liberation movements for other so-called oppressed groups. This narrow prism, however, obscures the universalist ideology of Islamism espoused by groups like Hamas, which, under a facade of anti-imperialist rhetoric, harbors a brutal dogma that is antithetical to the liberties and rights championed by LGBT activists. But contradictions within these groups and support for Palestine are as irrelevant as the contradictions within these groups themselves. This is one consequence of the simplistic binary view that Navabi critiques. But notice another consequence. This narrow prism, however, obscures the universalist ideology of Islamism espoused by groups like Hamas. So the warped lens of the LGBTQ and queer support for Palestine crowds provides cover for Hamas to work under. This should make even the most radical activists pause and think. And here's something else worth considering. Another disconcerting element of Queers for Palestine is that it popped up in prominent left-wing anti-Israel pro-Palestine rallies in the immediate aftermath of Hamas's terror attacks, before Israel had the chance to respond. As such, there is no way to interpret this slogan and the surrounding leftist fervor except as a signal of support, not merely for Palestine, but specifically for Hamas, the jihadist movement, with the explicit aim of eradicating the state of Israel. When thinking people question the motives of these protests, that's why. But what about the other protesters? Recall what Massab said. Uh, Hamas is serving Uh, foreign agendas, we're talking about Iran and we're talking about Russia lately. Hamas serve uh, uh, those parties and Iran pays them close to a billion dollars annually. Iran is the real master in this picture. Hamas does not serve the Palestinian people. Hamas serve Iran. The attempt to group everyone into the same coalition is careless, if not dangerous. There is a difference between Hamas, its Palestinian supporters, and Palestinians who do not support terrorism. But many in the West, predictably, group these people together, but we can't allow that 
contra the fashionable Western trends. If you were a peace-loving Palestinian citizen, would you want to see other nations grouping you in with terrorists that you want to be liberated from, or would you want them to acknowledge the difference? And in the West, this is so problematic because it creates a gray area that raises serious questions, as I've already alluded to. Let me give you a specific example. Activists like Rashida Tlaib can claim that they are simply pro-Palestinian, but grouping people together creates gray areas, and grouping people together is part of her worldview. So does pro-Palestinian mean supporting Palestinians who do not support Hamas? Or supporting Palestinians who do support Hamas? Does it mean she's pro-Hamas? All of the above? Or adopting the oppressed-oppressor categories? Is pro-Palestinian really a statement against Israel? The oppressor. Her reservation to condemn terrorists, her recent service as a social media propagandist for Hamas, not to mention the people she associates with, all raise legitimate questions about who she actually supports. The same questions can be asked of Western protesters. In many cases, there's no question. They want a better life for Palestinians and, aside from that, are blissfully ignorant. On the other side of the spectrum, there's also no question when protesters shout gas the Jews, but in the middle there's a gray area, and that gray area emerges due to Western dogma that says people need to be simplistically grouped together in binary fashion. The gray space is a safe space where ambiguity can be exploited by people who really do support the terrorist agenda under the guise of simply advocating for the oppressed. But if Yusuf is correct, and there are many reasons to think he is... Their lie about nationalism, that they are a national movement and they care for the Palestinian people. Look at them. They are using Palestinian people as a human shield. We need to free Gaza from Hamas. This is what Israel is doing. It's doing the Palestinian people the greatest favor. Then eliminating Hamas would be better for everyone, Gazans and Israelis alike. The fact that this goes unrecognized by so many in the West makes us question how many really are blissfully ignorant, and how many leverage ambiguity as a cover for their evil agendas. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.